Terry Haslett. I thank you for your attendance today. I'd like to start off by asking you a question. What do uh, Doberman, German Shepherd, Rottweiler, and Pitbull have in common? According to the highly esteemed dog behavior of Caesar Milan, these are breeds that for the past five decades have been unjustly persecuted as extremely dangerous dogs that should not be allowed a place in society. Brought to the U.S. with our founding fathers in the 1800s, what has happened that has made this breed judged so treacherous that euthanasia would be used just by the mere fact of breed and not the individual disposition of the dog? Today I'm going to share with you a few things you may not know about pit bulls, the biased image the breed receives, and how it may be possible to rehabilitate this negative reputation and restore an iconic American dog to its rightful place among mankind's best friends. So why are pit bulls the target of such animosity? Before dog fighting became popular in the 80s, pit bulls, or rather the bully breed of dogs, were an American favorite. The bully breed is used to refer to over 30 breeds and mixes that are incorrectly identified as pit bulls. The bully breeds descend from the same root breed known as the molosser, a Greek breed that was characterized by the short muzzle, large bones, and large frame and pendant ear pendant-shaped ears. At first, the Mollusers were bred with a range of other dogs that resulted in the characteristics found today in the various bully-type breeds. These dogs were bred to guard property and livestock. However, some owners would use their dogs in sports like bull baiting, which is believed to be the way the term bully breed came about. The breed was so popular that by the 1930s, pit bulls made it into advertising and the big screen often being associated with children like Buster Brown's dog Teach, the RCA Pup, and of course, who can forget Petey from the Little Rascals are gay. But character, character, but character myths, the increase of dog fighting and backyard breeding has tainted this original opinion. Who hasn't heard about the absurd amount of force exerted by the jaws of a pit bull? It is thought that the pit bull can exert 1,600 pounds per square inch with their jaw. But actually, their bite is the same as many other breeds at 235 PSI. The dog with the highest PSI bite is the Rottweiler at 328 PSI. But just because it can, doesn't mean it will bite or use that much force with the bite. Many also believe pits are mean and aggressive when in actuality, 86.8% of American pit bull terriers have passed their temperament testing, according to the American Temperament Test Society. This is a higher passing number than collies, beagles, and even golden retrievers. According to the society, pit bulls rank fourth for passing temperament testing. Then despite it being illegal, dog fighting made a comeback in the 80s with pit being the dog of choice. This led to an increase of backyard breeders whose only interest was financial gain by overbreeding the bully breed. Despite horrific details of what kind of abuse and inhumane treatment the dogs received, the poor pups, again, were labeled as bad guys. Just being labeled a pit bull can ruin the chance of any kind of adoption from a shelter and actually increases the chance of them being killed. 60% of all dogs in shelters are euthanized each year. Around 40% of these animals are classified as bully breeds, and another 20% are classified as pit bulls. Now only 48% of, 48 of the nation's shelters place pit bulls up for adoption, and about another 30 put them up only under special circumstances. The saddest part is that 22% of the nation's shelters euthanize dogs categorized as pit bulls regardless of their individual <laughs> disposition. This practice of breed discrimination is wrong, not only because perfectly healthy and happy pups are being put to death, but also because they're not given a chance due to ignorance and bias. How does this injustice change? Understanding the difference between the myths and the truths, and then to see that it is not the breed that's the problem, but the people who breed them and train them. The rate of throwaway dogs being used and abused for this sick pleasure needs to stop. Backyard breeders have to be stopped by people using only reputable breeders, or better yet, adopt a rescue from a shelter. Pitbull is an overused term that has been unfairly portraying millions of blameless dogs as the vicious, aggressive creatures 
This should be feared and avoided. These poor innocents not only are helplessly misunderstood, but are at the mercy of those who will listen and help them. If you would like more information about pit bulls, a great place to start is the Pit Bull Rescue Central website at www.pbrc.net or Google Caesar Milan, who is a wonderful advocate of all dogs, especially the bully breed. Before I close, I want to share with you why this subject is so important to me. I once believed all the hype about pit bulls and I was very afraid of them. It wasn't until I met a little girl named Layla, abandoned at six weeks on the streets of Philly, that I realized how wrong I was. Layla is the sweetest, most affectionate little girl and I can't imagine our family without her. There are so many more like my Layla out there looking for a forever home. Let's try to help.